You buy a Ford Galaxy focusing on practicality, but this large seven-seater MPV has many other virtues in this much improved fourth generation guise. There's class-leading refinement, advanced driver assistance technologies, and versatile interior innovations that'll make family life easier. Plus a much more efficient engine range that could see you running one of these with the kind of frugality and cleanliness you'd expect from a conventional medium range estate. One thing hasn't changed though. Unlike more compact seven seat models, adults can sit comfortably in the third row. A Galaxy should, after all, prioritize space. It still does. Once upon a time, this was what you meant when talk turned to people carrying MPVs. A large seven-seater with three rows of seats and proper room for fully-sized adults in all of them. Most MPVs aren't now like that, but if this is still your idea of people carrying perfection, then Ford's fourth-generation Galaxy is a contender that you just can't ignore. The Blue Oval brand now offers the widest selection of MPVs in the industry. Everything from the super mini based B Max at one end of the scale to the enormous nine seater Tonneo Custom at the other. The seven seat lineup starts with the car like Grand C Max and the van based Tonneo Connect, but for third row seating properly capable of regularly accommodating adults for longer journeys, uh, your first port of call in the Ford range will probably lie with the company's large segment Mondeo based S Max and Galaxy models, both of which were relaunched in mid 2015. Now these two cars may be virtually identical beneath the skin, but in the showroom they're aimed at very different kinds of customers. The sportier, more dynamic S-Max is a little cheaper and a little smaller inside than this Galaxy, hence its market positioning slightly closer to 7-seat MPVs like Renault's Grand Scenic and Vauxhall's Zafira Tura, derived from more compact designs. In contrast, this more practical Galaxy's boxier shape gives it significantly more rearward passenger space than cars of that sort. Instead, it more naturally competes with unapologetically large people carriers like Volkswagen's Chiran and Seat's Alhambra, the two rivals that shared this Ford model's design in its first two generations of life, uh, following the Galaxy's original launch back in 1994. That shared development approach certainly served its purpose in the early stages of the life of this model line, laying the groundwork for sales figures that today see over three quarters of a million galaxies pounding global roads. By 2006, though, the Blue Oval brand had decided it could do better alone, launching this car's predecessor, a better handling product that allowed buyers to get a lot in without having to chuck all the seats out. That third generation version was updated with a more modern engine range in 2011, but by 2015 it was starting to show its age when it came to issues of running cost efficiency, technology, safety and connectivity. Hence the need for this Mark IV model lineup, the one that we're going to look at here. A range stuffed with segment leading electronics and one that also includes an all wheel drive option to potentially tempt family buyers who might have been looking at seven seat SUVs. Plus, it claims to be just as spacious and even more practical than its appealing predecessor. As a result, Ford reckons this car offers an even stronger proposition in the large MPV sector. So let's find out if they're right. Think of an MPV that's good to drive. Well, if any people carrier at all comes to mind, then we reckon it'll probably have a Ford badge on the bonnet. Over the years, the Blue Oval brand has specialised in creating cars of this kind, uh, models that aren't averse to rewarding you on the way back from a school run. Nor is that run of form about to be interrupted here. We hadn't taken that for granted before trying this fourth generation Galaxy. After all, the Mark IV model Mondeo it shares its platform with has become noticeably less dynamic and more comfort orientated in its current guise. And to be frank, we'd expected this car to follow suit. To some extent, it does. Uh, there's a tad more body roll than we remember from before. And we don't think that the new electric power steering system is really quite as responsive or as feelsome as the previous model's old hydraulic setup. Ultimately, though, this MPV still has what it takes to dynamically outclass its competitors. 
We'll talk about the rejuvenated range of Euro 6 engines in a minute, but whichever one you choose, it'll be matched with segment leading refinement, plus brilliant stability and grip that allow you to push on when necessary in a way, well, you simply wouldn't want to in something directly comparable like a Volkswagen Charan. As before, this Galaxy shares those engines and all its underpinnings with the sportier looking large people carrier Ford offers in this segment, the S-Max. And also as before, Galaxy buyers get a slightly softer, uh, more comfort oriented approach than their S-Max counterparts when it comes to driving involvement. Enough of that involvement remains though to allow this big Ford to shrink around you in a manner that's very Mondeo-like. The best way we can uh, describe it is to observe that other large seven-seaters often feel vaguely pointless if you're alone in them on the move. Somehow, this one doesn't. Uh, don't get us wrong here, this remains a tall and heavy car that's over 1.7 tonnes in weight, so don't expect to be able to drive through corners at speed quite as quickly as you uh, could in, say, a comparable Mondeo estate. That said, if we're judging by the very modest standards of the large people carrying segment, then you'd have to say that the Galaxy sets the standard only bettered by its S-Max stablemate. Stick it into a corner and it clings on with light-footed precision, aided by a clever torque vectoring system that lightly breaks the inside front wheel through tight bends, sharpening turning and ensuring that all that power gets onto the tarmac. The ride's better too, thanks to a clever integral link rear suspension, a setup that Ford also uses on its Mustang sports car. Because of this, bigger tarmac tears are now dealt with more effectively than they were on the previous model, but smaller surface imperfections can still thump through the chassis quite readily. In other countries, Galaxy buyers can improve their car in this regard by paying extra for an adaptive damping system. That's something that you can't have in our market. There is, though, plenty of other optional technology to spend your money on. There's an active front steering feature that adjusts the steering ratio to match your speed. And here we've been trying the adaptive LED headlights that turn with the bends, uh, dip themselves at night and feature a glare-free high beam system that can keep them constantly on maximum brightness in a way that doesn't dazzle uh, other road users. Then there's an active speed limiter feature that automatically adapts your speed to the prevailing limits, theoretically making the possibility of getting zapped by a camera or a radar gun a thing of the past. And an adaptive cruise control system for highway travel that uses a radar to automatically keep you a safe distance behind the vehicle in front. On top of that, you can also specify the usual optional systems that allow the car to automatically park itself and autonomously stop itself if a forward-facing camera detects a hazard ahead. Probably our favourite high-tech feature, though, is standard fit on all Galaxy models, the Ford MyKey system. Now, this enables you to program a separate key for your car that will control the vehicle's use should you lend it out, say to your son or daughter, for example. This can allow you to restrict your Galaxy's top speed, uh, prevent deactivation of the driver assistance and the safety features, inhibit incoming phone calls, reduce the audio system's volume and even disable the stereo system completely if the seat belts aren't being used. As you'd expect, there's just as much technology on offer under the bonnet as was necessary uh, if this car was going to keep pace with its rivals. At the bottom of the range, Ford is offering a 1.5-litre EcoBoost SCTI petrol option, but this is a power plant that really better suits the brand's smaller Grand C-Max model. True, this unit's 160 PS output is willing enough, and the performance figures rest to 62 miles an hour in 10 seconds on route to 124 miles an hour. Don't sound too bad. The problem, though, comes with a lack of pulling power that you'll really notice when your Galaxy is fully laden. There's around 30% less torque on offer here than even the feeblest of the diesel variants can muster. So it's a diesel that you'll probably want. The various TDCI variants uh, remain all of two litres in size, but our Ford Assures are quite different from those on offer before. They certainly contribute to quieter progress, Ford claiming an improvement in refinement of up to three decibels in comparison to the previous Mark III model version of this car. More importantly, these Euro 6 power plants are more efficient and more powerful than their predecessors. The mainstream choice being between 120 PS, 150 PS and 180 PS versions. Uh, we're trying to avoid the feeblest one. It takes 13.6 seconds uh, to get to 62 miles an hour en route to 114 miles per hour. 
better is the 150 PS variant, which, uh, courtesy of 350 newton meters of torque, improves those figures to 10.9 seconds and 123 miles an hour. Here, though, I'm sampling the 180 PS derivative, where the figures are 9.8 seconds and 131 miles per hour. With the 150 PS and 180 PS variants, you get the chance to pay extra for Ford's uh, smooth dual clutch six speed power shift automatic gearbox. I'm trying that here. Now, with these two engines, there's also the extra cost option of turning this front wheel drive model into one that can send power to all four of its wheels, courtesy of Ford's intelligent all wheel drive system. Uh, this setup, available again on a Galaxy for the first time since Ford introduced it on the Mark 1 version back in the 90s, aims to tempt buyers who might otherwise be looking at a seven-seat family SUV. Towers may well be particularly interested, although opting for 4x4 traction doesn't increase the two-ton brake towing weight that applies to all the diesel models. There's no ride height change on all-wheel drive variants though, so if you've got a model fitted with that setup, there's no point in trying to conquer the Serengeti. It will, however, be ideal for rutted tracks, uh, slippery sloping tarmac driveways, icy mornings and muddy car parks, able to send up to 100% of engine torque to either the front or rear wheels as your traction needs demand. With the 150 PS diesel engine, the system comes mated to the usual six-speed manual transmission, while the 180 PS power plant has to have the intelligent all-wheel drive setup with the PowerShift Auto Box. And that's the package on test in this case. That only leaves the two performance-orientated Galaxy models, both likely to remain vanishingly rare in our market, and both available only with two-wheel drive and the PowerShift Auto transmission. Diesel drivers seeking sensationally rapid progress get the option of a 2-litre bi-turbo engine with 210 PS and a potent 450 Nm of torque. It manages 62 miles an hour in 8.9 seconds and 135 miles an hour, and you'd love it if you uh, regularly engaged in transcontinental towing. The petrol range, meanwhile, is topped off by the 2-litre EcoBoost turbo engine Ford uses in its Focus ST hot hatch. This unit here putting out 240 PS and capable of 62 miles an hour in 8.6 seconds en route to 140 miles an hour. You wouldn't expect this fourth generation Galaxy to look especially dynamic. Ford does, after all, offer a comparably sized S-Max MPV, if that's what you want. It should, though, appear modern and purposeful, or, to use Ford's terminology, contemporary and sophisticated. And most potential buyers will probably think that it does. The reasons why uh, have much to do with the style of this front end, where the raised Aston Martin-style trapezoidal front grille is positioned above a distinctive full-width lower grille. Flanking it are slimline headlamps that uh, flow into the raised belt line and can feature the brand's latest glare-free LED high beam technology for perfect full illumination that doesn't also dazzle oncoming traffic. Avoid entry-level trim and you also get daytime running lights made up of three LED strips that also function as indicators flashing sequentially towards the direction of the turn. In profile, the styling is neat but unremarkable, with a large glass house positioned above strong mid-level and lower swage lines. It's from this perspective that you start to see the differences between this car and a seven-seater people carrier based on a compact segment MPV, say uh, a Citroen Grand C4 Picasso, a Renault Grand Scenic, or a Vauxhall Zafira Tura, for instance. Now, if you take the Picasso as a typical example and compare its dimensions to those of this Ford, then you'll find that it's 251 millimeters shorter, 90 millimeters narrower, and 123 millimeters lower to the ground. Yet the so-called experts at the car magazines still so often reckon that cars of that sort have the size to rank as direct competitors to this one. I mean, we just can't see it. The Vauxhall, Chiran and Seat Alhambra models that we would pitch against this Galaxy are comparable in length, but they're fractionally narrower and shorter. Move to the rear and there's none of the dynamic frippery you'll find on a comparable S-Max. And you do without that model's more swept-back rear roofline too, which, as we'll see, will bring benefits to rear-seated folk. As at the side, the designers have striven to give the impression of a large glass area, the effect delivered here by thin pillars and the way that the window glass has been merged with the tail lamps. 
These vertical aerodynamic fins at each side offer another neat touch. So, time to take a seat behind the wheel. Now, that vast glass area I was talking about combines with these slim windscreen pillars to create excellent all-round visibility. Plus, it's easy to find the ideal driving position thanks to the considerable amount of seat and wheel adjustment provided and the way that the headrests go forward and back as well as up and down. The other aspect of the way this car is being sold relates to the appeal that Ford hopes it will have beyond the MPV market amongst buyers who uh, might be considering prestigiously badged SUVs or executive estates, hence the wide range of uh, optional luxury embellishments on offer. Take the extra-cost multi-contour cooled heated massaging seats, for example, here finished in lovely stitched Salerno leather. The higher quality of fit and finish the Spanish Valencia factory has produced around the cabin should also help in interesting these kinds of people. Uh, chrome accents frame the air vents and smarten up the lower part of the centre console and the passenger side of the fascia, while soft touch materials and accent stitching are used throughout. Inevitably, there's plenty here that's shared with Ford's Mondeo. The two cars feature much the same engineering, but that's no issue given the quality standards now being reached. Ahead of you, through the leather-trimmed uh, three-spoke multifunction steering wheel, there's a clear and classy instrument cluster that, in mid and upper range models, gives you this sophisticated 10.1-inch TFT setup made up of various inset multifunction displays. The two outer ones are framed by conventional speedometer and rev counter gauges with trip computer information on the left and safety functionality depicted on the right. In the middle, you get uh, entertainment, navigation and phone options. Anything that this setup can't tell you will probably be covered by the feature that on all models dominates the centre of the dash, the 8-inch SYNC 3 colour touchscreen there to play its part in reducing button clutter and giving the cabin a cleaner, smarter feel. The SYNC 3 package offers faster activation, larger buttons, easier app integration and, most importantly, it allows you to duplicate the functionality of your smartphone onto this central fascia screen via either Apple CarPlay or the Mirrorlink Android Auto system. Not so good is the way this touchscreen attracts reflections, particularly when you've got a sunroof fitted. If you're not familiar with the SYNC system, then it doesn't take long to adjust to it, with the central dash monitor divided into four now faster responding colour-coded sectors that allow you to activate audio, phone, climate control and, where fitted, sat-nav functions via touchscreen buttons. Heating and ventilation is also covered off by switch gear below the screen, which is just as well since the display buttons can be a little fiddly to use. So instead of stabbing away at those, it's better to try and master the system's impressive voice activated functionality that allows you to issue simple one shot commands like play song to play a track from a CD, where am I to find out where you are, or even I'm hungry to bring up a list of local restaurants from the system's built-in Michelin guide. Directions can then be activated from the split-screen navigation display. Practical touches include overhead space for your sunglasses and a compartment that uh, opens to also reveal one of those little extra mirrors that allow you to keep an eye on what those kids are doing in the back. It's just one of a whole range of storage compartments dotted around the cabin into which all those stickle bricks and felt pens and minion suites can be crammed. All are useful in terms of size and shape and they include a fascia top storage box this time around as well as a neat pull-out cubby down to the right of the steering wheel and a lidded box at the bottom of the centre console that is ideal for storage of your phone or iPod as it incorporates aux in, USB B and SD card points as well as a 12 volt socket. Look behind this area and there's a further open storage space plus the middle armrest rises to reveal a, a tray and a coin holder area beneath which is a deep recess. Two large cup holders sit behind the gear stick uh, making use of the space freed up by the switch from a conventional handbrake to one of those awkward buttons that car makers now seem to like so much. Plus, there's a reasonably sized glove box, uh, under-seat storage trays, and decently sized door pockets that can hold one and a half litre drinks bottles. We like the little design touches you can't see too. 
For example, the way the seating trim has been designed not to snag on zips and clothing studs. Now, to prevent this, a metal ball with needle-sharp spikes called a mace, just like the medieval weapon, is used to brush the fabric over 600 times throughout the production process. Equally practical is the humidity sensor that stops the windows fogging up and delivers best-in-class cooling and hot weather. Then there's the high-tech air filter, eight years in development, which is 50% more effective than its predecessor in blocking ultrafine particles, dealing with 99% of pollen to help the quarter of Europeans who apparently suffer from hay fever. Time to move rearwards. Now you'll notice at this point that Ford has decided against incorporating the sliding side doors you'll find on, say, that rival Volkswagen Charan. Ford uses these two on its smaller seven-seat MPVs, but has decided against them here because, the designers claim, conventional swing-out doors give passengers more elbow and shoulder room. Uh, if you were familiar with the previous version of this car, then you might also notice that this one boasts a lower floor this time around, making it easier for older folk in particular to access a cabin that, we're told, offers no fewer than 32 different seating and load space combinations. So, let's check a few of those out. So we'll start in this middle row. Here you'll find that the three individual seats provided do most of what MPV buyers would expect them to do. Sliding back and forth and reclining for greater comfort on longer journeys. What's missing though are a few of the features you'll find in some of Ford's other seven-seat MPVs. Take their van-based Grand Tourneo Connect model where you can fully remove the seats from the car and uh, use a handy recessed underfloor storage bin. The one in this Galaxy is taken up with a toolkit. Then there's the Blue Oval brand smaller Grand C-Max model's neat seat-eating seat mechanism. Uh, this is designed for those times when you've only got to carry a couple of people in this middle row. And that setup enables uh, three chairs to morph into a couple of larger, more comfortable ones while freeing up a walkway rearwards. Enough, though, on what we don't have here. Having spent some time with this Galaxy, we think that what it does provide for middle row folk will be quite satisfactory for most potential buyers. We like Ford's preference for stadium style seat positioning that enables you to better see forward through into the front. Although this approach could compromise ultimate headroom a little for really tall people, especially in a car fitted with this one's huge optional glass panorama roof. The payoff, though, is the commanding, airy feel that this particular feature provides. Everyday practicality is delivered by things like these seat back tables and solar tinted glass that blocks ultraviolet light and heat from the cabin. Most buyers will opt for an optional extra cost family pack that, amongst other things, will add in side window blinds and a 230 volt power outlet. Let's check out the third row, now a little more easily accessible thanks to both the recessed floor design and this easy entry one-touch mechanism that tilts and slides the seat forward, up and out of your way. It's at this point that you'll cash in on this car's extra size. The boxy shape delivers significantly more headroom than you get in an S-Max. Plus, there's a vast amount more space than you get from one of those compact segment uh, 70 MPVs I was talking about earlier, with up to 40 millimetres more headroom than you get in one of those. As a result, in a Galaxy, you can use the seats back here for adults on longer trips. Now, that simply wouldn't be comfortably possible in, say, a Grand C4 Picasso, a Grand Scenic, or even an S-Max. It's a bit annoying that neither of those rearmost pews get Isofix child seat fastenings. These are only fitted to the chairs in the middle row. Still, both third row passengers uh, do get their own cup holder, and the person on the right gets this little lidded storage box too. So, on to boot space. Now, on plusher models like this one, this is accessed by a powered rear tailgate that can be upgraded to activate by waving your foot beneath the bumper should you find yourself approaching the car laden down with shopping. Personally, we would have preferred it if Ford had invested some development time instead in bringing us the kind of opening tailgate glass feature that some MPVs and SUVs provide for the quick and easy slinging in of small bags and coats. Fortunately, the lack of this feature isn't the issue it might be if this hatch was heavy to lift. 
As it is, uh, the mechanism rises easily to reveal another difference between this car and supposed rivals from the stretched seven-seat compact MPV sector, luggage space. With all three seating rows in use, models of that class have such little cargo room that all you'll be able to carry are a few plastic shopping bags. Ford's own Grand C-Max, for instance, offers just 88 litres of capacity. When all the seats are upright in this Galaxy, you get 300 litres to play with, 15 litres more than is provided by the S-Max. OK, that's not a massive amount, but it is more than you get from the entire boot of most super minis. And it matches a similarly configured rival Charan or Alhambra MPV without forcing you to do without a spare wheel, as those brands insist you must. The space provided should certainly be enough for a small push chair, while beneath the floor there's a useful 20-litre storage area that isn't compromised by the space saver rear wheel that I just mentioned, because that is hidden snugly underneath the car. You also get a bag hook and the option of a luggage net to keep items in place. Uh, yes, a van-based MPV like Ford's Grand Tonneo Connect would offer you a bit more room in this format, but with that kind of people carry, you've got the hassle of having to physically lump out the third row chairs and store them in a garage if you're only travelling five up and you need lots of boot space. There's none of that kind of hassle here. In this Ford, these extra rearmost seats fold neatly into the floor and they can do so with electrical assistance. That's if you've avoided entry level trim and opted for the extra cost family pack that I mentioned earlier. This power easy entry feature is activated via these buttons on the left hand cargo area sidewall. Now on an S-Max, it only flattens the seats, but on this Galaxy model, it can electrically raise them again too. Once these chairs are retracted, up to 1,301 litres of space is freed up, 336 litres more than you get in an S-Max, and it can be covered by this useful uh, reversible foldable loading mat that comes as part of that family pack I mentioned earlier. Uh, to give you some perspective, the cargo area on offer in this format could be up to 60% more than you get from the C4 Grand Picasso style stretched seven-seat models I've been talking about from the compact MPV class. It might also be worth mentioning that you've got nearly three times as much room here as you find in an equivalent version of Ford's Mondeo Estate with second row seating in place. And unlike that car, there's the option of freeing up even more room by sliding forward the second row seating, provided you don't mind compromising middle seat legroom. For ultimate carriage capacity, you can, of course, fold forward the individual middle row chairs. Now, in all Galaxy models, these seats are flattened electrically, and once you've got used to it, it's a rather nice feature to have, which makes it a little annoying that you'll always have to raise them back up again manually. Anyway, once the middle row is flat, it frees up a vast area, 2,339 litres in size. To give you some perspective, that's 42 litres more than you get in a Charan and 319 litres more than you get in an S-Max. Helpfully, built-in overlapping covers uh, stop you losing smaller items down the gaps between the seats once everything's folded. A little disappointingly, though, there's no option to extend that versatility even further with an optional uh, fold-flat front passenger seat so as to take really long items like kayaks and surfboards. Still, with nearly two metres of load length on offer here, the capacity provided should be ample for most likely users. List pricing suggests you'll be paying somewhere in the 27 to 37,000 pound bracket for your Galaxy, depending on the variant you choose. All models sold come in seven seat configuration, and if you avoid the entry level petrol and diesel variants, there's the 1550 pound option of the PowerShift six speed dual clutch automatic transmission that we're trying here. Now, Ford reckons that almost 97% of buyers will want one of those TDCI diesel variants, and you can see why. There are, after all, only a couple of petrol versions, with the 2-litre EcoBoost variant too expensive for most to run, and the entry-level 1.5-litre EcoBoost model saving you only £1,150 on the base diesel, yet coming with 30% less pulling power and 20% higher running costs. So, not tempting. So... A diesel it is then, and specifically a two-litre one. 
since all the TDCI engines are of that size, even the top 210 PS flagship by turbo version. Now, looking at the various TDCI options available, we'd want to find the £750 premium to go from the rather feebly performing entry-level 120 PS unit to the mid-range 150 PS version. That, priced at around £29,000, probably represents a sweet spot in the lineup. Here, though, we're trying the slightly pokier 180 PS variant, although we have to point out that it is quite an expensive choice. Since you can't have this TDCI 180 engine in basic ZTEC trim, you're looking at needing the best part of £32,000 for it, and that is quite a jump. If you want to take up the opportunity that this fourth generation Galaxy offers of finding the extra £1,550 for Ford's intelligent all-wheel drive system, then you'll find it only in the diesel range, where it's only offered as an option on the 150 PS manual model or this 180 PS power shift automatic variant. So much for the Galaxy lineup. Onto the value proposition it offers in comparison to other similarly sized Family 4 models. Now, the Blue Oval brand's comparably sized S Max MPV not only shares showroom space with this car, but also its floor plan and all its mechanicals. Not its pricing structure, though. Uh, on mainstream Galaxy models, there's a premium of almost £2,500 over an equivalent S Max, and the difference will be even greater if you're looking at an upscale variant like this one. In return for that, though, you do get a significantly bigger boot and third row seating space that will be much more comfortable for adults on longer journeys. So, your call. If space is all, then the only other Ford product you could really consider would be the company's Torneo Custom model. There you get eight seats and a huge boot. But the Torneo is essentially a van with seats and windows and in comparable form, it would cost around £5,000 more. On to alternatives beyond the Ford brand. As I suggested at the beginning, we're not going to waste too much time here comparing this Galaxy to the compact segment 7C MPVs that many of the motor magazines will mistakenly suggest as potential rivals. Cars like uh, Citroën's Grand C4 Picasso, Vauxhall's Zafira Tura, Renault's Grand Scenic and models like them with child-orientated fold-out boot seats. With diesel engines, such vehicles tend to be priced in the 20 to 25,000 pound bracket, but if you were shopping for something like that and browsing in a Ford showroom, well, you'd probably be looking at a Grand C Max, not a Galaxy. Ultimately, then, when it boils down to it, we think there are really only two direct alternatives to Galaxy ownership if you need a people carrier that can regularly seat seven adults and which has been properly designed to look and handle like a car rather than being something directly derived from a van. I say two alternatives. Actually, it's really only one design badged either as the Seat Alhambra or the Volkswagen Charan. As you might expect, the SEAT option is a more affordable one. It's likely to save you around £2,000 over comparable versions of this Ford. With the Charan, the pricing is much closer, with variants of the Volkswagen no more than £400 to £1,000 cheaper than their Galaxy equivalents, depending on the uh, derivative that you're looking at. Given, though, that this Ford is a more modern product, uh, many will think this is a reasonable premium to pay. A word, too, about the value proposition of this all-wheel drive Galaxy variant, a model aimed primarily against seven-seat family SUVs in the £33,000 to £38,000 segment. Such a rival SUV, uh, say Kia Sorento, Hyundai Santa Fe or Land Rover Discovery Sport, might well be physically as large as this Galaxy, but those bigger, clunkier 4x4 systems common to that class of car mean a higher floor height, so more cramped conditions for third-row folk. Plus, of course, an SUV comes with higher running costs too. In other words, a Galaxy with 4x4 traction certainly does have a place in the market. It's the mainstream front-driven versions that will interest most buyers, though. If, having considered all those options, you're tempted towards one, then you'll be wanting to know just how generous Ford has been with that standard specification. So, let's see. Even the entry-level ZTEC variants come with alloy wheels of at least 17 inches in size, uh, front and rear parking sensors, power-folding electric mirrors, a Thatcham Category 1 alarm and a mini spare wheel rather than one of those uh, fiddly tyre repair kits. Inside, there's a keyless start system, sports seats and Ford's Sync 3 infotainment setup accessed via an 8-inch colour touchscreen. 
through Sync 3, you duplicate the functionality of your smartphone onto the central facial display via Apple CarPlay or the MirrorLink Android Auto systems. And of course, you can control audio, climate and phone functions via voice or touchscreen buttons. Other nice standard features include a multicolour interior ambient lighting package and the useful Ford MyKey setup that recognises your favourite driving settings from an individually programmed ignition key. Most buyers will want to find the extra £1,800 to upgrade themselves to titanium spec, which is the next trim level up. This premium gets you LED daytime running lights, body coloured trim, privacy glass, an auto dimming rear view mirror, auto headlamps and wipers, a keyless entry system and a cruise control with an active speed limiter that can automatically adjust your speed to the prevailing local limit. Most significantly, Titanium Spec also adds a DAB audio system and satellite navigation to that Sync 3 infotainment setup. If you want to go further, this top spec Titanium X trim adds full leather upholstery, 10 way electric adjustment for the driver's seat, complete with memory settings, a panorama opening glass roof, a powered tailgate, heated front seats, and an active park assist system that will steer you into the tightest spaces. Enough on standard spec, time to have a look at some of the key extra cost features. Buyers of entry-level ZTEC models get the chance to specify an additional and very affordable family pack that gives you second row side window blinds, a 230 volt power outlet, a rear cargo net and a reversible foldable load mat. Choose this option in one of the titanium variants and it will also include the power easy entry system that electrically retracts the second and third row seating at the touch of a button. On this car, we've also got a range of other significant items. The upgraded Sony-branded DAB audio setup, a heated steering wheel, and clever LED adaptive headlights that turn with the bends, dip themselves automatically after dark, and incorporate a glare-free high beam system that doesn't dazzle other road users at night. It's all pretty complete. The only additional niceties that we would have liked to have tried but were lacking being the front split view camera that increases your field of view at junctions and the desirable multi-contour seats which can come with an active motion massage function. Uh, optional features that we would be less inclined to want to consider include an active front steering system that can vary steering assistance with the speed and the option to open this model's powered tailgate by waving your foot beneath the bumper. Uh, Self-levelling suspension might be worth looking at though if you were regularly going to be carrying um, weighty or bulky loads, although you can't have that on an all-wheel drive variant. There's the usual range of tow bars and roof boxes, plus roof rails and carriers for cycles, skis and snowboards, the kind of thing that you would expect for a car of this sort. As for aesthetics, well, there's a choice of 17 or 18 inch alloy wheels. Uh, one annoyance though is that you'll almost certainly have to pay extra for your chosen paint finish, as there's only one standard colour and you probably won't want that. It's a rather drab blazer blue. Otherwise, you've got to select from a range of extra cost premium and exclusive body colours. Here, we've got the cheapest one, frozen white. On to safety. This Galaxy got a full house five-star rating after its test by Euro NCAP, with good scores in the individual categories. 87% for both adult and child occupants, 79% for pedestrian impacts, and 71% for safety assistance. As you expect in this day and age, all models include ESP stability control, traction control and an ABS braking system that's now been further optimised. And in panic stops, it'll be aided by EBA, emergency brake assist, can reduce your braking distance by as much as a metre. Pedestrian safety has been uh, enhanced by concealed wipers that are designed to limit injuries from head impacts. On the move, when you're pushing on, roll stability control and curve control will look after you through the corners. You also get tyre pressure monitoring and Isofix child seat fastenings for second row seats, plus plenty of airbags as part of Ford's IPS intelligent protection system. And these include twin front and side bags, along with curtain bags for all three seating rows, plus a driver's knee bag and second row seatbelt pretensioners. That Sync 3 infotainment system also includes an emergency assistance feature and this will automatically summon help to your exact location if the airbags are deployed in an accident. 
Avoid entry-level trim and you also get three extra electronic features. A lane keeping aid that on the highway can apply steering torque to guide your Galaxy back into its lane if you should drift from it. A driver alert system that continually monitors your reactions for drowsiness. And also a traffic sign recognition feature which pictures road signs as you pass and displays them for you on the dash. If you want to go further, then you can pay extra for various additional safety features. We would recommend the adaptive cruise control system, which automatically keeps you a safe distance behind the car in front on the highway. You might also be familiar with blind spot information system technology that stops you from dangerously pulling out to overtake when there's a car in your blind spot. For Galaxy buyers, this feature is packaged up with a cross-traffic alert setup that stops you from reversing out of a space into the path of an oncoming car. Another option worth having is the active city stop pre-collision assist with pedestrian detection system that uses a forward-facing camera to scan the road ahead for pedestrians, cyclists or other potential collision hazards. If one's detected, you'll be warned. Now, if you don't respond, or perhaps you aren't able to, then the brakes will automatically be applied to decrease the severity of any resulting accident. Ford needs Galaxy buyers to be able to justify this car with their heads as well as their hearts, uh, something which wasn't always possible with older models, some of which weren't exactly cutting edge beneath the bonnet. That's been turned around with this Mark IV model range thanks to a rejuvenated Euro 6 lineup of EcoBoost petrol and TDCI diesel engines, featuring everything Ford currently knows about engine efficiency. So there's smart regenerative charging, which harvests energy which would otherwise be lost under braking, and an active grille shutter system, which at a standstill and at start off cleverly keeps uh, the front grille vent open to cool the engine but automatically closes it when you pick up speed improving aerodynamics and helping to save fuel. The sleek shape and carefully fashioned underbody aerodynamic shielding also play their part in reducing drag. And to combat harmful fumes, there's an active thermal management system that improves warm-up time so that the engines reach peak efficiency faster. Plus, as you would expect, there's the usual auto start-stop setup that cuts the engine when you don't need it, uh, when you're uh, stuck in traffic or waiting at the lights. Diesel models also get more efficient cylinder head and fuel injection designs, plus a lean nitrogen oxide exhaust trap after treatment system for cleaner emissions. All of this has pretty much produced the desired result, to the point where the volume petrol version in this fourth generation model lineup is nearly as clean and frugal as diesel derivatives of the previous third generation car. The model in question, the 1.5 litre EcoBoost SCTI variant, manages 43.5 miles per gallon on the combined cycle and 149 grams per kilometre of CO2. Of course, the diesel versions that almost everyone will buy can now do a lot better than that. All are two litres in size, and assuming you're happy with a manual gearbox and front-wheel drive, you get the same returns whether you order your Galaxy TDCI with 120, 150, or as in this case, 180 PS. Specifically, I'm talking 56.5 miles per gallon on the combined cycle and 129 grams per kilometre of CO2. Now, that's not quite as good a showing as you get from a slightly smaller seven-seat MPV like Renault's Grand Scenic or Citroën's C4 Grand Picasso, but it's on a par with the latest equivalent versions of more comparable large people carrying rivals like Seat's Alhambra and Volkswagen Chiran. We'd expected this Galaxy model to be marginally more expensive to run than its sleeker looking Ford S Max design stablemate. Actually, though, the efficiency returns of the two cars are identical. The Galaxy's boxier shape uh, compensated for by its slightly lighter weight. Opting for either the power shift automatic gearbox or the all wheel drive system, both of which we're trying here, uh, isn't too ruinous in terms of running costs. In either case, you'll hit your returns by just over 5%. Even the top 210 PS by turbo diesel variant puts up a reasonable showing, managing 51.4 miles per gallon on the combined cycle and 144 grams per kilometre of CO2. For completeness, I'll also give you the figures for the top petrol variant, the 240 PS 2 litre EcoBoost SCTI model. This manages 35.8 miles per gallon on the combined cycle and 180 grams per kilometre of CO2. 
that to help real world users get somewhere near these quoted figures on an everyday basis, there's an illuminated arrow on the instrument panel that tells you when to change gear for maximum fuel efficiency. What else? Uh, well, Galaxy models come with an unremarkable three-year, 60,000-mile Ford warranty with Ford assistance by the roadside for the first year. Now, if you plan on keeping your car for longer or you're a high-mileage driver, you can pay a small extra cost to extend that warranty to either four years and 80,000 miles or five years and 100,000 miles. There's also the option of a Ford Protect Premium plan that over two or three years can cut the cost of scheduled garage visits. On that subject, service intervals are every 12,500 miles for petrol models and every 18,000 miles for the diesels. We should mention residual values too. Now, Ford says that this time around it won't be shifting big numbers of Galaxy models onto higher fleets, and that'll make a big difference when it comes to market depreciation. Independent experts cap reckon that this fourth generation model will retain nearly £2,000 more of its value after three years of use than its predecessor did. Uh, so, finally, we'll cover insurance groupings, which start at 17E for the base 120 PS diesel model, rising to 20E or 21E for the volume 150 PS diesel variants. The 180 PS TDCI version is rated at group 24E, while the top 2 litre 210 PS bi-turbo model rates at group 2080. For petrol variants, you're looking at groups 19, 20 or 21E for the 1.5 litre derivative, depending on the spec you choose, and group 26E for the 2 litre SCTI variant. When you consider the kinds of buyers who actually go out and purchase big 7C MPVs and the things they actually need, you could easily make a case for this considerably improved fourth generation Ford Galaxy being a better car than its S Max sister vehicle. Where the sportily styled S Max majors on combining driving vigour with MPV practicality, this Galaxy just gets on with the job in hand that of fulfilling the traditional people carrying role. It's immensely practical, very well built, and it still drives better than most of its rivals. With an engine range that at last matches the quality of the rest of the product and key additions in safety and connectivity, this big Ford now has all the tools it needs to take on all comers in the large MPV segment. Yes, it certainly could and it perhaps should be more affordable, but if you get the right deal and you don't want something so large that it's almost bus-like, then this car is hard to overlook in this sector. Whether you'd be prepared to pay the premium for one over the equally impressive S-Max is, of course, another question. It'll really come down to just how often you use that third seating row. If the answer is regularly and not just for kids, then the Galaxy has to be a better choice. As for its appeal over models from other brands, well, that looks strong. It certainly helps that the only really direct competition comes from Volkswagen's Chiran, a design also offered in cheaper form badged as a Seat Alhambra. Both models have been updated, but not to the point where they can match the extent of the clever technology on offer here. Segment unique developments like the speed limiter that adjusts automatically to road signs, preserving your license, um, the electrically folding seats, the glare-free high beam system, and the option of intelligent all-wheel drive. And we could go on. Of course, there's a slightly higher price to pay for this level of advancement. Some also might feel that in the quest for ultimate efficiency and comfort, a little of the driving character of early Galaxy models has been lost. We will take that trade-off, though, as part of what is certainly a much better product. To replicate this car's handling, you'd need something smaller. To match or beat its practicality and space, you'd need something more ponderous to drive. It is, in short, a very complete proposition indeed. Or, as Ford puts it, a first-class way to travel. <laughs>